Hi everyone, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies here, part of my ongoing podcast series on all things naturopathic, natural medicine. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my journey through anxiety, which I've already recorded three sessions for, but um, this final one I think is about finding solutions that are not about symptom suppression because that's how modern medicine basically deals with every problem is to get rid of symptoms and that is what most people accept as a cure or solution but actually it's not really dealing with the underlying causes and one of the big issues around anxiety which is not talked about is low thyroid and Low thyroid is an epidemic in Western nations, particularly for women due to the high stress that most women are under. Cortisol depresses uh, the HPT axis, the hypothalamus, pituitary and thyroid axis. So it's also linked with female hormones as well. Um, And so often women eventually end up very low in thyroid hormone. And this happened to me actually um, over a number of years, but I was completely unaware and so was my GP. One of the first symptoms for me, um, honestly, was a weird one. Um, It was buildup of wax in the ear. And I can remember a time when I was going through a very painful breakup. And about three months after that breakup, uh, my, my ears just started to bung up with wax and I became quite deaf in both ears and ringing all the time because when the wax gets hard and um, solid it causes ringing in the ears a sort of form of tinnitus now the reason for that of course is thyroid hormone is to do with metabolism and keeping your body temperature running at the normal um, amount you know so temperature range sort of 36 37 um, 37 37.5 is ideal but a lot of women run a lot lower than that and 36 is actually very very low i've seen women running at 35 this is centigrade uh, 35.4.5 i mean that's so low that basically normal metabolism is not really functioning properly and it seems to me logical that if your body temperature is really low then the wax in your ears is going to be more solid it makes sense doesn't it because You've probably noticed if you put your fingers in your ears, your ears are quite warm generally. So I think that was one of the first symptoms, but it was never, ever picked up as potentially a sign of low thyroid. And then over time, weight gain, um, that crept on as I got older. uh, And of course, that's just put down to being in middle age, um, but it may not be. There's no reason why you should necessarily increase in weight as you age. Um, And then finally for me um was uh, eyelid swelling and getting very painful eyes which i'd had on and off the whole of my life but it started to get a real problem particularly as i was doing a lot of computer work and looking closely at a screen and finding that it was just my eyes were so gritty and tired and again not mentioned um you know i had no link to thyroid until I actually went to have a general test at the docks and they said, you know, actually your thyroid level is really, really low. So um, I don't need to go over that because I've probably covered that in other videos, but I was put on levothyroxine, which I didn't get on with. And then I went for a nutritional consultation with a GP who specializes in thyroid. And then I went on to natural desiccated thyroid, which, better because it contains t3 which is the active version and you need to convert but i also had to take selenium uh, b12 um, magnesium those are the three main things that most women are low on so um i'd love to tell you that it has righted itself but i have to say it hasn't Um, it may be due to my variable um, compliance in other words i sometimes don't take what i need to take because I'm doing so many other things. Um, But uh, another cardinal sign you should look for, by the way, is in the fingernails. So have you ever noticed the half moons on your fingernails? Okay, I've got, uh, I think you can see that one there is definitely a half moon. That is a smaller half moon. But if you look at the rest of my fingernails, there are none at all. 
And what's really interesting, that's called a lunula, and the half moon is called the lunula, that when your thyroid function starts to go down, it's actually marked in your nails. So the first one to lose its, its half moon will be your little finger and it sort of works its way back to your thumb. So thumbs are often the last ones to lose. Now, if I didn't have a half moon in my thumb, then I'd really be in trouble um, because I'd be so low that I could barely function. So at least it's showing me I have a little thyroid you know, function left. Um, also ridges, vertical ridges. I don't suppose that can be, you can visualize that, but if you just feel your nails, do they feel ridged when you run a crossways? mine do now that's that's another cardinal sign um but doctors don't ask you they don't ask you what are your fingernails like let's have a look so there's lots you can tell through the body really um that you don't need necessarily tests but if they do do tests their primary one will be tsh thyroid stimulating hormone and that's not even a thyroid hormone it's the pre-hormone that is sent to the thyroid um, the, from the pituitary to tell the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone and if that's high it sort of suggests that the body is is struggling to kick out enough thyroid hormone and mine currently is 9.6 which is it's way above the reference range um, which i think goes up to about 5.6 in the uk maybe different in other countries um, but really it should be under two <laughs> Um, if I was working well, if my thyroid was functioning well. And you can see another cardinal sign, of course, is this slight swelling around, around the neck area. So um, lots of things that do link in to anxiety. Um, thyroid hormone is essential uh, generally for functioning and it can cause all sorts of mood changes because the brain is an organ as well. And, and if you're not running at the right temperature, um, it can actually affect the way you feel. So you can get anxiety, you can get depression, depending on your particular balance. Now, you know, for me, I've been going through a period of anxiety, which is slowly decreasing, thank God. Uh, I can, I'm still easily triggered, my God, if anything happens that I can't control, um, I'm back up there straight away. But my general state now is a lot less anxious than it was. So I'm continuing with the acupuncture, um, I've pulled off from the herbs at the moment. They're just too strong for me. Um, they cause me all sorts of gastric issues. So I'm just doing acupuncture to see if I can rebalance everything. And, you know, it's an ongoing journey. Health is a journey. It's not a quick fix. It's not about symptom suppression, really. It's about lifestyle change. You know, what am I doing that is not supporting my body? You know, I am trying to work less. Um, but a lot of the stress that I'm under is internal. It's about expectation. It's about guilt. It's about judgment of myself as failing or not being good enough. There are so many reasons why you get stressed. It's not just the external stresses. It's the belief systems. It's the experiences that you've had up to this point in your life and how you've internalized them. Um, that's a kind of trauma informed approach. So don't give up. Do you know, use your GP's advice and knowledge, but also look outside and get, get yourself um, a more natural medicine approach too. And there are plenty of people who can advise you on that if you look up natural medicine. Many GPs are now, luckily, uh, we're changing their, their study in natural medicine now. So it's a fantastic time to really be learning about this because so much that we believe to be the case is now being overturned. And new approaches are currently, you know, coming in all the time. And I just think we need an integrated medicine now um, because our GPs are generally overrun with chronic conditions, which they can't really treat that well. So we do need a new approach. And I think integrated or functional medicine is one way of doing it. I think it's probably the future. There are other approaches which may be a little more esoteric, like energy medicine, um, which are also coming in and do have a really good scientific basis, actually, despite the term, you might think, ooh, that sounds a bit flaky, but actually energy is what we are. We just happen to be in a concrete form of energy called material matter. Um, we tend to think of ourselves as solid, but uh, quantum physics tells us that we're not, um, that there is no such thing as a solid p particle of matter. It's, it's energy in motion. Um, assuming a position at any one time based on the observer 
<laughs> that's quantum physics for you. It is a bit weird, but it, it has been fully accepted now for over 120 years. And we're only just beginning to incorporate that into medicine. But um, we now know, for instance, that there are ways in, of changing the energy of the body through sound, through um, light, particularly with certain frequencies of light. Um, daylight, as we know, is really important for human beings, but we can actually create certain frequencies that stimulate particular parts of your brain through through the eyes and through the skin, actually. Um, uh, the skin is also transparent enough to absorb certain frequencies. So lots of new technologies coming in which are going to help people like you and me to recover our health. Um, but we have to take responsibility and we have to get informed. And that's why I'm producing these podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, do leave comments and um, look me up, alchemytherapies.co.uk. Thanks. Bye for now.